This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Before Apple versus Samsung, iPhone versus Android, there was the OG tech fight with Mac versus PC. You can bash it and hate it. Just Leopard is just better than it. Leopard is just better than it. iTunes for Windows is probably the best Windows app ever written. I used Vista as well. I found it to be clunky, awkward, unreliable, and very crash prone. We've got cards and letters from lots of people that say that iTunes is the, their favorite app on Windows. I'm giving a glass of ice water to somebody in hell. <laughs> so we're gonna back up the clock about 10 years. Who you are as a person and as a tech enthusiast was somehow wrapped up in what desktop OS you used. I guess in that aspect, some things haven't, haven't really changed. Hello everybody, my name is John. I'm a recent Mac switcher, actually as of today, June 6th. So prior to 2007, for me, I had always used a PC. But come 2007, when I wanted to start my YouTube career, that's when I started to look at OS's different. I never really thought about ever getting a Mac at the time, but I needed to create video and edit video, and I had 0.0, .0 experience doing any of that. Something that I wanted to do. I saw YouTube kind of becoming a thing. There was Google Video at the time, and I wanted to make content. I had no grand vision of launching a YouTube channel or a brand. I was just a geek who wanted to talk about it and hopefully meet other geeks like me online. The Apple ecosystem as we know it now didn't exist back then. There wasn't, you know, the iMessages and continuity stuff. So, you know, back then, the iLife suite of software was amazing, in particular, iMovie. I didn't have the time or even probably the skill set to learn the old school Final Cut, but iMovie was an amazing way to easily edit video for somebody with no experience. There was, and this stuff maybe you've never heard of, there was iChat. And it was made video conferencing really easy, made instant messaging something that was awesome. The whole iLife suite made things like publishing websites really easy and, and simple to do. Fast forward to now, and it's a very different space than it was back then. We've got Mac OS Catalina, which is changing a lot of what a Mac OS can do. And I look back on that first computer and that first switch to Mac and realize that none of this would have happened if it wasn't for that first machine. It's Mac OS Catalina. Right, so now the, the current OS, it's Mac Catalina, and Apple is bridging that gap between desktop and mobile even more to what's the inevitability of them combining and merging. And for a lot of folks, they haven't been that eager to have those two worlds merge. But I think it represents a huge opportunity it brings a lot of new things to the table. And then you've got like Sidecar, the ability to use your iPad as a secondary display. And if you've got the pencil, it kind of gives you a touch screen experience of Mac OS, which is relatively new. And then you've got Project Catalyst that's bringing those iOS apps to the Mac. So the Twitter app is back. My mom can have the same experience in the same app on her phone that she has on my super old iMac that she's still using. <laughs> So assuming you're not gonna buy a new computer and you wanna install Catalina, it's gonna take 30 gigs of space to download and install. That is precious, precious hard drive space. So a tool like Clean My Mac X is gonna make that process just way easier for you. It's gonna get rid of all of that garbage space on your computer. You'd be surprised how much like junk you have in your computer just by using it. Got dozens of cleanup and tune-up tools all in one app. It also should speed up your Mac too. It'll help remove malware and adware agents and build an interactive map of your Mac storage. You can see where all those precious gigabytes are going. If you want your upgrade to Catalina to go super smooth, give Clean My Mac X a shot. I'll link to it down below. There's a free trial going on right now, so no risk to you and make sure things go well. So now 12 years later, why am I still using Mac? And I honestly don't have that much of an allegiance to Mac or PC. There was like a solid two years where I was using a combination of a Surface Book, a Surface Pro, I was using a Razer laptop for a while. I tend to hop back and forth. I really 
themes, whatever hardware looks nicest to me is what I'll go with. But for now, I'm opting to go back to the Mac side. And the, the real reason that I've chosen to come back to the Mac side is really the same reason I think a lot of folks choose any Apple products. The ecosystem is so good. I'm generally on a Mac. My wife is on Apple's ecosystem. My parents, my grandparents. It makes everything just work easily. I can airdrop files back and forth. I got my shared photo galleries. So my grandparents can see pictures of my kids. It's sort of the same reason that people keep coming back to Apple. They just do ecosystem really well. And I don't want to misrepresent that it's been a magical, like unicorn riding, you know, trail here with the Max. I've had plenty of problems, and they've been far from perfect. Uh, I had to return a MacBook Air because it was dual core and it seemed way too underpowered for what I was looking to do with it. I've had issues with keyboards on MacBook Pros. I thought my original 15 inch MacBook Pro had a bad battery because battery life was so bad. I've had trackpad issues. I've had logic boards fail. This has not been a smooth ride. Honestly, what's kept me on the Mac and usually what's keeping me carrying at least an iPhone with me in my pocket is ecosystem. They just do it really well. And that's not a knock on what Google does with Android or Microsoft with Windows. It's just what makes my life easier. And I'm going to use what makes my life simpler, easier, and for right now, hassle-free. Gaming. Don't, don't game on a Mac.